Hello, and welcome to Science Never Stops with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. My name is David Weigel, and I'm the director of the Intuitive Planetarium, and today I'll be teaching you how you can explore the universe on your own using the free software Worldwide Telescope. Let's get started. Our first tour of Worldwide Telescope is going to be all about using and exploring the sky mode of Worldwide Telescope. So if you open Worldwide Telescope, this is the, the Windows version, uh, although you can also jump in on the online version, which you can find at worldwidetelescope.org. Um, either way, you can move down to the lower left hand side of the screen and if we see the look at menu right in here is set to sky, then you're in the right place. Now it's a little bit easy to get overwhelmed by when first opening Worldwide Telescope because there are so many buttons on the screen and I don't want that to uh, tied you up very much because you can still uh, explore in a worldwide telescope without having to push all of these buttons and it will become fairly apparent quickly what they're for. So we can simply take our mouse and left clicking the mouse we can click and drag and move around the screen and you'll notice that we're looking at different parts of the night sky. In this uh, all sky imagery, uh, it's called the digitized sky survey, we can see that down here under imagery. And what's really neat about this is we can find something uh, that we're familiar with, or not, um, but we can find, right now we're focused on the Orion constellation, and um, we can highlight that actually in constellation lines by coming over here to the left hand side of the screen with the layer manager and uh, toggle constellation lines on. As an aside, if your screen looks a little bit different than mine, um, again, I'm using the Windows version right now, and I also have some customized settings that I prefer, including different colors. So uh, you can see Orion outlined right there, and I'm going to toggle it back off for right now. And I'm also going to remove the layer manager from our view so that we have a bigger view of the night sky. So using the scrolling wheel on a physical mouse or two fingers on an iPad or on uh, a laptop, you can scroll just like you would normally, and we can actually zoom in until we run out of resolution. So if we're zooming in towards Orion's belt right in here, we can actually see some things that are quite exciting. Uh, first off, we can see this sort of gas and dust in the sky, which looks a lot like a flame because uh, it's the flame nebula, in fact. Uh, it isn't a flame in the sky, but uh, it sure looks like one. We also have something that looks like a horse's head, and that's the horse head nebula, crazy enough. Now, we can scroll out a little bit, move back down further, and take a look at the iconic Orion Nebula, which is actually something that you can see in the sky with your naked eye, uh, even tonight um, at this time of year, so in the, uh, in the winter time, into early spring. And you'll notice in here that it, as we zoom in, we start to uh, really lose resolution fairly quickly and everything gets washed out and this leaves a lot to be desired. So if we look at this bottom menu down here, uh, this is called the uh, context bar. And as we're exploring around, you'll notice that, uh, perhaps you've noticed already, that it's been changing a little bit when we look at various different things. And so basically what it's telling you is different higher resolution imageries that we can overlay based on what is available in our field of view. So we can click this, for example, and this is a higher resolution picture of the Orion Nebula as taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And as we zoom into this, we can again zoom in until we run out of resolution. Um, and all of this imagery is tiling in from the cloud so that it doesn't overwhelm your computer, which is uh, very neat. So we can see that this is a beautiful, beautiful image. And the Orion Nebula is, again, this cloud of gas and dust. And it is a stellar nursery. This is where stars are born. And we can see some, some young, youthful stars. Um, we also can see these darker regions uh, where there's a much... Uh, much denser clumping of gas and dust, and this is where stars are, are being formed. Now, we can also um, take a look at the difference between this image and the background imagery by using the image crossfader, dragging that slider. And in this case, it uh, doesn't give us a lot of 
um, much to compare against because uh, the other the background image is sort of washed out. But if we look around the edge in here, we can see that this does align very, very nicely with the structure. And with all of this imagery, whenever you highlight over it, hover over it, or uh, click on it, it's going to bring that picture and overlay it on our night sky and do so in the correct location and orientation and scale and all of those nice things because of how it's been properly um, processed by scientists. So uh, we can take a look at uh, different imagery and there's plenty of imagery built in and you can also bring in your own pictures if you like to take pictures in the night sky or somebody else's pictures. Uh, or pictures from something like uh, Hubble as well, if they're not already uh, in the software. Now, in that case, I knew where the Orion Nebula was, and I knew what I was looking for, but if you're just sort of cruising through space, um, sort of clicking around and exploring on your own, uh, you might find things of interest to you. And if we look at the constellation of Taurus the Bull, and you can see its face with this V-shaped star cluster in here, and using, um, sort of following along uh, where its horns would be, it kind of can move towards this patch of space, and there's actually another, nebu uh, another nebula right about in here. Um, it's in our context bar in here, so we can click on this once, and it will actually do the zooming for us. It'll center the screen and then zoom in, and overlay this higher resolution picture, also from Hubble. And this is all. Uh, this is called the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is actually uh, a nebula just like the Orion Nebula, except that it's on the opposite end of the stellar life cycle. This is the result of a supernova, a star that exploded and spewed its guts all over surrounding space. And so that's what we're looking at right in here. We can see all this uh, sort of beautiful filamented um, sort of gas and dust that is being uh, pushed away from this explosion. And this is uh, an event that was actually visible with the naked eye on the Earth about a thousand years ago. And the gas and dust that we're seeing expanding right now is and has been expanding from our point of view for the last thousand years, which is really exciting. Now, this is again a picture from the Hubble Space Telescope, but if we overlay uh, a different image, um, this is taking a look uh, at the pulsar, the, the stellar remnant from this explosion, the core of that collapsed star um, that it has turned into a pulsar. So due to a strong magnetic field and very fast rotation, um, we actually get these streams, these jets of particles um, pulsing away from it, almost like a cosmic lighthouse. And so you can see those jets that are moving away in the, to the bottom left and to the upper right. Uh, very, very pretty. And in context, and then with this picture, we can overlay, you can actually see um, that going on right in here, jets coming out here, jets coming out here. Very, very pretty. Now, as we back away, uh, it's nice to look at nebulae. Um, things that are within our galaxy, within the Milky Way, but it's also really cool to look for uh, other galaxies as well. So right in here is the Andromeda Galaxy. This is also something that you can see with the naked eye if your conditions are very, very good. And here in Huntsville, they're often not very good. You have to get quite far away in order to, or quite far away from the city in order to see Andromeda as a little smudge to the naked eye. Um, but as we zoom in, we can see that this is a, a beautiful galaxy. It's a galaxy that is about twice as large as ours, um, which is the Milky Way, of course, and is home to about maybe as many as more than twice as many stars as our galaxy. So we're looking at perhaps as many as a trillion individual stars in this galaxy. We can overlay imagery on this as well, such as uh, this picture, which is from the Spitzer Space Telescope, looking in infrared, which is similar to um, using uh, night vision goggles to look at body heat, for example. And these spiral arms are very apparent in infrared because the uh, clumping of gas and dust is very significant in the spiral arms, and this leads to new stellar birth, just like we saw in the Orion Nebula, but in this case, in a, an entirely different galaxy, about two and a half million light years away. Now, we're looking 
at the night sky in this enormous data set, which is called the Digitized Sky Survey. We can see the plane of the Milky Way, our galaxy in here. Our galaxy is sort of disc shaped. And so from our perspective within it, we're looking edge on into that disc right in here and an arbitrary sort of top and bottom, so to speak, over here. But if we get back to Andromeda, we can take a look at the background imagery in different wavelengths as well, these very large surveys. So we can take a look at the WISE All Sky Survey, which is infrared, a little bit lower resolution than this high resolution overlay. We can also take a look at ultraviolet light right in here, which I think is very pretty. Now, you'll notice that there are some, some black patches in here, and it's not that this part of the sky is dark in ultraviolet, but rather that there are holes in the data. This is not a complete data set. And so this is a really nice opportunity for us to point out that all of the data that you're looking at in Worldwide Telescope is all real. I mean, it's process data, but it's all data that scientists are using on their own uh, to further explore the universe and make all the discoveries that they're making. So this is, this is all real imagery, and uh, that's a, a very beautiful and powerful thing to explore. So with that said, go check it out. You can find this on worldwidetelescope.org. If you have any questions, please comment below, and I'm happy to answer those. Further, join us this Friday night to at 7 p.m. and I will be providing a live tour of what's visible at this time of year in the night sky using the online version of Worldwide Telescope and answering any questions as to how you might better use it. Thanks so much for joining us today and remember that science never stops at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center or anywhere.